Oh, hi. <laughs> Had a little problem there with my computer, so um, finally got it working. So I guess this is uh, episode 11, and we're going to be talking about... Oh, what was it that I said I was going to be talking about? Um, copyright issues and um, claiming ownership of work. Uh, let's see how I can stretch this out. Maybe I'll get some phone calls in tonight. As always, it's being recorded, so if you miss the show, which you probably are if you're not listening to this right now, uh, you'll be able to see the YouTube uh, recording. So, uh, let me see. Decided, uh, I've gotten in with this group called FRAG. Um, who is a group of artists uh, that are all around, mainly local, but some from, you know, uh, states around the area. And they're having meetings usually every uh, second Wednesday of the month. So uh, this one was a late one, but they had one last night. And um, it's just a get-together. Um, it's not really a meeting-meeting kind of thing. It's more of like um, drink, eat, uh, talk, uh, do a little art project kind of theme. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, it's just getting together with the artist in the group and doing different things and coming up with ideas to really help the area out and grow. Um, so they're doing that on Wednesdays. So I thought, well, if they're doing that on Wednesdays, and most festivals start on Fridays, and you know you usually have Faba TV doing their live feeds on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, um, very few on Thursdays. I thought, well, Thursday would be a great day to do my live show, and I pushed it up an hour because a lot of people were saying that. You know, they couldn't watch the show because they were still at work. And, well, you know, try to help out people. Try to do what I can. So, uh, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can see me live on the Internet. Um, tonight, unofficial sponsor is Food Club Wild Mountain cheap it's like Mountain Dew tastes great Ugh. not right now Max go to your couch couch my dog loves me so much he just comes up in my lap sometimes and he's not a small dog anymore so um so let's see. Uh, let's see if I can at least stretch the information out to the full hour. Uh, hopefully, I can get some calls in from people. But before you call, please let me get through this. Uh, my little parts first. Um, but uh, if you do call, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you from calling. I may hang up on you. No, I'd never do that. I'll answer it. You'll be live on the air with me. So. Um, Usually, I have a hard time figuring out what topic to talk about, but, you know, Facebook is really good with all the drama and stuff and different things that go on that you can just check in the morning, really, on a few little things, even on your news feed, and find some topics to really talk about, like um, copyright issues. Um, there are a lot of people, and this has happened in the past, this really didn't... It didn't happen uh, directly. It was an indirect mistake that happened. Um, there was a picture that was shown. It was an exact copy of another person's work. It had some additions to it, and you can tell it was, you know, the just like the other person's work. But it was done by that person, and you know they added some details to it you know to make it their own well one detail to make it their own but other than that um, it blew out of proportion it really wasn't supposed to be meant that way um, 
there was some confusion and some misunderstanding. So that problem got fixed pretty quickly. And Well, it got fixed. Let's say that. It wasn't that quick, but it got fixed. Um, kind of. <laughs> there are issues in the face and body painting community when it comes to copyrighted material. A lot of people, and the copyright issues and the claiming work issue is actually all in one. It's not really two separate issues. It's actually together. Um, if you're going to use somebody else's work, uh, you need to give them credit for it. You know, you need to at least state who the artist is, the model is, the photographer is, and stuff. Never claim it as your own. Um, if you copy somebody's work, you need to at least, I mean, if you haven't changed anything and you just copied it, you know, exactly, you need to give credit to the person who gave you the inspiration or gave you the instruction to do it. I mean, that's just common sense. To claim that something's yours originally, when it's not, I'm sorry, I always have an itchy nose for some reason, and I need to stop wiping my nose in front of the camera. But, back to the issue. Um, <laughs> there needs to be some accountability on people's parts. Um, you need to own up, you need to get rid of the ego and you need to let people know who it is that inspired you to do what you did you know um, when I even made a post on my business page um, if you're watching this on Facebook um, you can take a look at my uh, business page if you're watching it from there go to uh, I think it's the second status on there it talks about pretty much this um, the greatest compliment I could ever get from a fellow face and body painter is wow I love Mark Reed's work or wow Nick Wolf does a great job because when they say that it's like okay these people are better than me I'm striving to get to the point where they're at and if my work looks like theirs and it's nothing that they've ever created it's all my work that is a plus for me that's a compliment that's great because it means that I'm getting up to the level where I want to be I wanna be up here I wanna be above where I'm at right now the thing is I'm never going to do something that's a complete copy without giving credit to who it is Whenever I do skeleton teeth, I learned this from Nick and Brian Wolf in a couple other classes and several different um, conventions and workshops. I tell people, you know, I love the teeth. I learned it from the Wolf Brothers. It's great. I love the way these teeth look, you know, and they do it so easily. I learned stuff from Dutch Bahari. I've learned stuff from Mark Reed. I've learned stuff from Pasher, Ginny, Jay Bautista. Um, I've even learned stuff from um, John Place. I mean, within a year of knowing him, I mean, from the second Fabiac that I attended to this Fabiac that I attended in the past this year, he has grown so much with his knowledge of, you know, special effects prosthetics and stuff. And it's just unbelievable how much he's grown in just that year. I couldn't do that, but. Then again, I'm, well, I'm not going to get into that, but <laughs> he's done a great job in a short amount of time. I've learned stuff from him. I've learned stuff from Marcella, from Heather, from Lisa Joy Young, from Carrie Ann, from um, Margie Cantor, from other people that, uh, you know, that are in the community. Let me see if I can name off some, um, uh, the, uh, uh, just some Shannon Randolph, uh, Mandy Eileen Schiff, uh, Della Morta, uh, Josh Mohawk, um, Tracy Purple, you know, all these people, Nix Herrera. Uh, I can go on and on and on and list all these names. I mean, uh, Wolf Reichter, uh from Germany. He, I missed him this past Fabiac because I love his uh, 
black light classes. He, you know, comes, finds me. He says, hey, you got to go take a look at this. This is really awesome. And I'll go and take a look at it. I'll take photos and, you know, I'll talk to him and, you know, we'll hang out. I strive to be up there. You know, there are some really great people out there and I love the compliments. But if I ever use anything that they do, any techniques that they have that I incorporate, that I use, I will give them credit for. Um, if I do an exact copy, which nowadays I don't. I always put in, I may use an element, but pretty much the rest is all my design. So then I can claim it to be my design. But if somebody sees, hey, you know, hey, I know that element. I know that technique. You know, I say, yeah, you helped me out with it. I never have the ego big enough to just claim it as my own. Um, nor would I ever take a person's class. They show their design and how they do it. And then make an exact copy of it. I'm always going to change it up that little bit to my own style. Mainly because I don't want to be like them. They're already there. I don't want to be known as the child of such and such. Um, just a Nick Wolf copycat or a Mark Reed copycat. I don't want to be known as that. I want to have my own style. I'm still striving to find my own style. As I said in my status, some people may think I'm already there. I don't. I'm an artist. I'm critical of myself. I'm critical of my art. Um, if you are worried about people stealing your photographs and claiming them as their own, as part of this copyright issue that we have, put a watermark on it. It's not that hard. There are free watermark pro uh, programs out there. In fact, I'll put it in the link in the YouTube video when I post this up on YouTube. Um, I'll also... Um, put it up on my business page um, when I share the video um, it's TSR watermark it's a really basic program you can use an image you can use text to copyright you can put it wherever you want you can adjust the size you can do um, bulk so if you have multiple photos you can uh, tag all those photos in there and then you can watermark them all in one shot it's a really great program. It's not that hard to do. Now, if you're going to do a watermark on a program, make sure you do it partially over the image that's your design. Why? Because if you put it to the side, it can be easily cropped out. You want to actually make that watermark go a little over your design. It's not going to hurt you to display something that's a little covered. If you don't want it stolen, don't worry about it. Now, for the longest time, I haven't had this problem. I guess my work isn't good enough to steal. So nobody's really stolen anything that's mine. Uh, let me go to my chat room just in case people are talking. Um, yes, there are watermark apps for the iPad. There's watermark apps for um, Android. There's watermark apps for everything your computer, free programs. I mean, I had limited funds in the beginning. I do all my own graphic design. I do all my own website design and hosting. Um, I do everything myself because I can't afford to have uh, other people do it for me and then charge me an arm and a leg to do it. I go through my, I go through a different company to get my business cards and banners. Um, I would love to support John Place. I really would. And at some time, I will. Um, but for right now, I'm not in the area where I can actually just go out there, spend money, and get the stuff I need at a higher cost than what I do now. So there, check for free stuff. Free is not bad. Okay, Free is good when it actually helps you grow. But as soon as you get to a certain point, please make sure that you, you know, try to help out everybody. Um, Tal Soriano Thompson does really great. Yeah, free is better than nothing. She actually does um, business cards and brochures and, you know, everything else too. Well, certain things. You can check her out on uh, shopglittertattoos.com and um, 
you can check out her stuff. She's uh, actually gone into business for herself uh, to do this graphic design and to really help out. If you were at Fabaic, she was passing out cards, uh, postcards with her business. So uh, I'll put a link to uh, her website too. Check out her glitter tattoos while you're at it. Um, you can see the wings that I designed for her. I also sent her some more wings and some more other designs, which Tal, you have not incorporated into your stuff yet. Call me. Do whatever you have to do. Let's make this happen. <laughs> I want to see those things sell. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and also, Tal, we need to get a jam going together in Richmond where, uh, during a time that I can come up there and, you know, do another live broadcast, uh, of that again so uh, call me later not on the air we'll discuss that and we'll see what we can do find a weekend that's great for everybody or find a time during the week uh, and during the summer that we can do it where we're not already booked with other stuff and hopefully on a day that's not 114 degrees so we can do this outside too that was crazy last year 114 degrees in Richmond Virginia uh, I would come to the jam with Nick Wolf, but I've got things during that time. I've already, I'm already booked. So, um, so the thing is with copyright issues and stuff like that, and um, Tal actually put up a great uh, blog entry, and I'll put that link also on um, on the description of the YouTube video and uh, in the link that I'll place on Facebook um, she did a great blog on you know the whole copyright issue and also on trademarks and why she doesn't have certain things um, that she sells in the tattoo stencils um, yes it's at widebodyusa.blogspot.com um, there's a whole thing with trademarks that she can go into better than I can so I'm not even going to go into that um, if she wants to call in and talk about it that's fine um, but other than that I don't think I'm really going to talk about it that much as far as copyrights make sure you copyright your images if you feel safe enough not to copyright your images don't I don't copyright my images that much anymore I know what my work is everybody else knows what my work is um, Except for Marcella. For some reason, she thought that the She-Hulk that I did two years ago was uh, Nick's, Nick Wolf's, <laughs> which is a compliment. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I haven't had any problems with people stealing my images. I, I had one person, and uh, when I told her that if I came and helped her out with business that uh, people would ask for my cards and she would lose business because they would take me instead because they don't like her work. Uh, don't, if you're not at the level of the person that you're copying, don't use their image, period. You look like an idiot. I'm sorry, okay? Well, actually, I'm not sorry. You are an idiot. If your level is not at or above the person who you are using their image for your promotion, you're an idiot. You're going to look like an idiot. The people are going to notice how much of an idiot you are when you try to paint that exact picture. So, uh, hello. Turn off your sound. Hello. Hello, Tal. How you doing? How's it going? I cut off my sound. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, because you get a nice echo if you don't. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all. I just saw this one question here that Fun Frog posted that I think you really, really need to talk about is what can you do if someone find another one using your images? And uh, what do you not do? A lot you could do. You can try and scare them off. You can try and write a, write a mean letter, but I actually like your approach much better. It's like, how can I do to help you? It's probably a more effective and productive way because getting into a pissing match with another um, person who 
dares to be a thief is probably not going to help you because they obviously, 90% of the time, they know that they're stealing, but they do it anyway because they don't care. It's not an accidental steal or borrowing of an image. So I would say if you don't watermark, not trademark, watermark your image, right. it's your fault that someone took it. And then good luck trying to chase someone in the UK if you're in the USA or somewhere in Australia to just... You know, we had some instances on uh, Facebook where people were pissed off because they saw a picture of a business card that had someone else's image on. There's no way you can find that person and chase them. There's just no way. No, you so, can't. Watermark your images. Well, the thing is, that's like the best advertising. Even if somebody does that, and I know this is not the best way because you know everybody talks about karma and stuff like that. But if somebody steals your image and they're on Facebook and they're using your image. You can easily make comments on their image. You can share their image on other people's walls. Get other people involved to help you out. I've done it in the past. People have looked at me because I'm very honest, blunt, and I don't you know, like when people's stuff gets stolen, so I will speak up even though I become the middleman at that point. Um, I didn't have any of my work stolen, but I'm telling somebody else what to do with their stuff. But if you get help from other sources, get people to start saying, hey, that's this person's work. That's that person's work. You know, um, people even like it. You know, they'll share it and say, you know, yeah, this is my work. And they're not even a body painter to begin with. But you just go on there and you say, hey, that looks like uh, Mark Reed's work. Hey, you know, that's Sean Jones in that. Uh, if you know the model, put the model down. If the person tries to go on and say, oh, well, this is my child, and you know it's not their child, but you know who the artist is, and it was their child, make that point. Uh, Karen Mercer had that happen yeah, to her. Just, just remember, absolutely, if you can, try anything, but just remember that sometimes with good, you probably can get more results than with just a pissing match. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and try your best, but also know that there is a chance that you're not going to win. And your other, you know, the next step can try and can be try and send a bunch of law, lawyers, but that that's too costly. So it's a non-realistic scenario for face painters. The next option would be to download a cease and desist letter from the internet and try and <laughs> plug your information in and hope you can create some some echo that way. But it's not really a uh, it's not really super effective. So. No, you know, the, the best advice is to just keep on going and create art and keep rocking and create your signature and posting a lot of stuff so people know your work and recognize your signature that and then it's it's a no-brainer. I mean, obviously, you don't really see Nick posting any watermarks anymore. It's like, I guess, once you get to that caliber, it doesn't matter. So um, that was just my thought on that. And that's one of the things I always recommend is, like, if you get caught with images on Facebook without watermarks, it's your fault, and don't be upset about it, because when you yeah. upload something on Facebook, you shared it with the rest of the world, or anything on Google+, Plus or any kind of social media, and stick your website on it, because if someone does a Google search for face painting and look at images, and they happen to see something they like with your contact information, that may be a good lead for business, too, so there's always a way to think about it and squeeze some goodness out of it, for sure. Well, that's true, and also if you're really if you know about images, if you know how to do um, editing of the actual uh, information on the actual image itself, you can go in and you can tag yourself. You can um, the information file that's actually attached to the photo. You can actually add in your name, the name of your company, when it was done. Um, several other information and when you go to post it up online it's automatically going to put it into the description of the picture um, if you have your camera set a certain way and you just upload straight from the camera to YouTube or to Facebook it will actually put in the description that information that was put onto that image so you can put your business name you, and different I think stuff next show we talk about that because that's really valuable information right and that way, if anybody takes it or tries to copy it, if they don't edit that information, it's automatically going to go out everywhere. So when it looks up in Google, it's going to find all that information on that image. So, And I'll put that information up. Uh, I'll, 
I'll find a program that'll make it easier to do that and post a link up to how to download that program too. And maybe there's an app for it. <laughs> if not, maybe we so, should make one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, well, I just wanted to chime in. So thanks for your show, and I will continue watching. All right. Well, thank you for calling, Tal. Did you want to talk about it's trademarks? Definitely a, we'll definitely do a Super Jam. Right, I just don't oh, yeah. know exactly when, but we will do one soon. Definitely. Um, did you want to yeah. talk about trademarks at all? Um, you mean copyrighted popular images? Yeah, you know, like Disney trademarks, um, Shinrio. The one point, I guess, the best, the best point, or the most, the best, the most important thing to remember is that. You should never, ever, ever use these characters to advertise your business. So if your business win customers because you do Hello Kitty parties, that's illegal. But if you happen to be at a house where someone asks you for Hello Kitty and this cute little three-year-old sitting next to you begging for you to say Hello Kitty with cute pouty eyes, you know, you could use your judgment on how risky that scenario is. But if you go after business because you are an awesome Disney uh, animator or painter, or if you go after business because you can dress up like Superman, that's part of copyright infringement, and it right. kind of sucks because it's the basics. It's what it's what all all the kids draw to, and everybody feel like it's their bestseller as well. I've been testing it for several months now, and I found out that the kids are not as picky as we think they are. Really, they just want to no. feel and awesome. So if we can make a superhero, and if we can make a princess. And if we can make a butterfly or, like, just exciting paintings, we can get just as thrilled faces, <laughs> and you will make just as many sales without having these things on your board. Right. So I, I am a firm believer that even if you don't have Spider-Man on your board, um, the kids will come and still want to get painted. They're not going to be like, oh, this guy sucks. He doesn't know how to paint Spider-Man. I doubt it. I mean, I know you prove it. You don't really use much of a board at all. I've seen you at work, so... Besides your your inspirational photos and some you know stuff you have on your uh, monitor when you grab it, but um, oh yeah, you yeah, know I'm a firm believer. You know it's like you have to put these things to the test and not be emotional because all these emotional arguments and and I don't know teasy fits I guess you can call those on Facebook where people get so bent out of shape someone steal their image but then two seconds later. They do the exact same thing to Disney. Well, why does it not feel the same? Because Disney has more money than we do? Because they're more accomplished artists? Because they're a bigger company? Because they're the top 1%. Hmm? I said they're the top 1%. We're the 99%. Okay, we're going to stay away from politics during this show. (laughs) Again, we're not talking about emotional process here. This is like pure logic. Remember that? Remember that. That's what oh, yeah. the difference between uh, a pure artist and an artist that has to be a businessman also, or woman, you know, is that some of those decisions cannot be 100% emotion. They have to be based on how you play your card smart. And that's a, that's a big deal, in my opinion. Right. Like, the difference between an, an artist, even if you're an aut- awesome artist, and a an entrepreneur that actually takes in the next step and makes money is separating the emotion with from the actions, even right. though it's your art. Because when it's your art, it's really tough, you know. You leave a piece of you with every person that comes through your chair. Right. I know it. You know, if you do henna or face painting or whatever it is, when you create something, it's like a connection that you make. You give something of you away with every person that goes. So I understand the emotion, but it's... But if you want to take the next step and become a smart business person, you cannot just, you know, make a, you know. Well, you also got to. Decisions based on emotion and get pissed off about it. It's right. not going to promote your business. Well, with the trademark thing, uh, I think it's more of a regional thing. I hear more issues in, like, uh, L.A. and Orlando and up in New York in certain areas. Most people in Orlando don't go around and paint a whole bunch of Mickey Mouse faces or Spider-Man because of Universal Studios and, you know, Disney World there. Uh, They're going to get caught easier. But if you're in backwoods country, you know, you're at a local event. If you're not doing something like a major corporate event or, you know, um, some big company party or something like that, 
you really don't have to worry about the trademarks that much because I don't think in a small little backwoods town that somebody's going to complain, oh, you're doing Spider-Man? I'm going to call the company and have you sued. Or I don't think that the person who created Spider-Man, or even Stan Lee, is going to come to your little town and go, you're doing Spider-Man, I'm going to sue you for everything you have. That That's just not going to happen. But you got to use your judgment, uh, like you said. And if you think you're going to get in trouble, the best thing to do is not do it. Um, yeah, I think it's a honestly, I think it's a mindset. And because we are artists, and we are trained professionals, or we aspire to be. We go to all these conferences, try and become more and more oh, yeah. professionals, and teach the trade and pass on the tradition. To mindset, you kind of have to take on. And if you, if it's part of you know, fans are growth, can I still pay Spider Mask without mentioning Spider Man? If you use a red Spider Man mask, it's gonna obviously be a Spider Man. And again, you're relying. The whole point is you cannot rely on another art in order to promote your sales. Right. But if you're in it, but it, that's, that's the thing is, you know, and the best example was from a student I met in Fabaic. After one of my classes, she said, I went to Walmart and I bought a, fa- a fleece fabric that had Mickey Mouse on it. And if you look at those fabrics that are made by Disney, at the very edge of the seam of that fabric, it says not for commercial use. So if I come home and I make a pillow out of it and I call it the Mickey pillow and then I sit in the market and I sell that pillow because it has Mickey on it, that's a copyright infringement. But if oh, yeah. I use that pillow at home, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But if you are making a commercial use that is making profit, that's when you're crossing the line. And if you set standards and you just tell your clients, you know, I respect the copyright look awesome you know, awesome spiders, and I can make a black widow mask, whatever, name right. something else, change up the colors, how hard is it? I mean, it doesn't have to be super sophisticated, but just change that mindset and respect others' work, just like you would like to be respected, because if, if your goal is to be a, a rock and you want your art to be popular and famous one day, then you have to hope that those people around you will treat you the same way. So if you set that as a precedent and you move on, then... You know, hopefully that good karma will go around. Oh, yeah. Not just bad karma. <laughs> Definitely. You know, and, and that, that's why I said I, th- I really loved your approach of saying, if someone stole your image, say, hey, can I help you get better? Because it's so much more effective to reach out and try and maybe offer help than just get pissed off. You probably can gain so much more out of it. Oh, no. In that, general, you that... probably will achieve what you want. <laughs> And maybe make another friend or someone that could throw some business at you, too. Right. Well, the thing is, what what I actually said was not that, can I help you? She actually said, maybe I can push some business your way. You know, trying to keep the image on there and stuff. And after looking at what she actually did, which was way lower quality than mine, I told her, I said, look, if you have me come to an event in your area and I put out my business cards and people want me to come in, you're going to lose the business because you're using my images to promote yourself, which you cannot do. So unless you're going to, you know, remove the image, you know, you're going to make it bad for yourself. You know, that's like saying you know how to make a sandwich and you don't and it turns out really bad and you know the person never going to eat that sandwich ever again or ask you to make a sandwich ever again you know <laughs> i mean it's really funny there is a there is a uh, every once in a while i do a search for glitter tattoos here in town just to see what others are doing it's part of keeping up with the trade and i actually found an ad on craigslist for richmond for glitter tattoos that use a bunch of my a bunch of wide body photos <laughs> straight from the website with the logo <laughs> So, uh, I actually did not call them yet, but that is on my list of things to do, to just try and call and find out who they are. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as long as things are not being done out of anger, I think it's, it's all for a good path. And, and just remember these feelings. If someone steals your image, it sucks. It's a crap. It could be a compliment, but it also kind of hurts. And maybe remember that hurt feeling and not, and not do it, you know, like pay it forward. Respect the artist. And as one community. Oh, yeah. So. If you really want to be spiteful, the best thing to do is, if it's a person in your area, another local face painter, and they're stealing your images, find out what their next event is going to be and try to get in at that event as the, the second face painter in there with that other person. 
so that you can show up all your pictures plus the ones that the person stole that they may have displayed there and let people know that this person steals indirectly. You're just setting up doing face painting, but they're going to notice that you're there and then your images are at this other face painter's place. You know, it's kind of like throwing it in their face, but then again, they did it first by taking your image, you know. Or just sit on their chair, go get painted, and ask them to do the one of the most complicated designs on that. <laughs> and then hand them your card <laughs> after they're done. <laughs> and then when they're done, be like, does this look like my face in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> that could be funny. A lot of humor can really, really help in this, in this industry, that's for sure. <laughs> Keep smiling. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I had, um, I had made these cards up, and I still have them in my car. If I see a face painter out there who's using the wrong product or um, is doing face painting and they didn't put, have it on their application, do it. I have these cards made up to hand out to them along with my business card. Well, I even talked about that online. Everybody's like, "Well, you know, that's probably not such a good idea," and this and that. And I haven't had to use them. Everybody I talk to has become my friend. You know, they wanted to learn more about it. You know, we talk now, and they're starting to use the right products, and they're actually filling it out on their applications now whenever they do events. It's not hurting me, um, mainly because, and my ego is going to sound pretty bad, I'm the only one in my area that does it at a high quality, like you see. Um, everybody's and below me. And all competitions are only going to kick your butt and make you better. That's the one right. thing for sure. Instead of getting upset, learn a new trick. Learn yeah. a new design. Get better. Step, I, up, step out of your boundaries. <laughs> That's what I try to do all the time. I got upset on the 4th of July when I found out there was five face painters out there besides myself at this event. You know, I even talked to them. And then, you know what? I decided I'm not going to complain about how many face painters there are anymore and stuff because I had so much business that night, I can guarantee that I made more than all of them combined. <laughs> you know, yeah. because oh they God. were willing That's to pay the like high prices. What was that? I'm looking at uh, another post here on your feed. Craft acrylic is probably another thing you should talk about. But yeah. Go. It was great talking to All you. Right. And I will um, definitely be in touch soon about a wide body Daniel Super Jam and some wings. Yes. Probably next week will be better because I'm filled up this weekend. I hope you are too. <laughs> I am. So All right. I will talk to you soon. Have a great night. You too. Thanks for calling, Tal. Bye. Bye. Sure, bye. <laughs> All right, as far as the acrylics on face paints, I've gone into this so many times, and I know everybody else has. Um, acrylics are not good to use on people's faces. No matter what they say about it, you know, being like liquid latex, which acrylic really is nothing more than colored liquid latex, it also has a few other um, chemicals in it uh, that are used for drying and bonding purposes on materials. Um, there is such thing as colored liquid latex. You can apply it to the skin, but you're also supposed to put a thin coat of Vaseline on the body first before you do that. It creates a barrier. It keeps it from sticking to certain things on your body. It uh, causes less irritation, but you're also going to have people that are allergic to latex. Acrylics are really bad for the skin. If you've seen pictures, I know Tara Isle and uh, Karen Mercer and a few other people um, have posted pictures of children that they've actually washed their face off and you can see the reddening where that paint was. It dries, it hardens, it irritates the skin, it uh, pulls the oils out, it sticks to the hairs, it can rip the hairs out. Acrylics are bad. If you ever see somebody using acrylics at a festival or an event, I go up to them first. I don't go to an organizer because the organizer is not going to do too much in the first place. For some reason, organizers just, they're all about themselves. They don't really care about the situation. I've had this happen too many times. Um, I know some good organizers. Most of them are bad organizers. Um, go up to the people, hand them your card, say, you know, hey, if you want to talk about this a little bit more, if you're really interested in doing face painting, here's my card, you know, call me. We'll talk. I'll show you, you know, the products that, you know, will actually work. You can go down to Michael's and buy them. I mean, 
try to stop them from using the acrylics. Most of the time, they're going to snub you off and they're going to keep using acrylics. But at least you got the warning out there. Also, don't be quiet about it. Let people know. I had a lady tell me, well, it washes off. I was like, no. Wrong answer. You are harming these kids, putting acrylics on their face, which is not for cosmetic use. I said it out loud in front of all these parents. It didn't hurt my business to do it either. Because she was just down for me. In fact, there was one across from me and one just down for me. Stay away from the Walmart face paints too. That stuff actually stains and burns the skin. It does. Stay away from it. It's crap. Um... Stay away from Palmer paints. Palmer paints are nothing more than colored glue and acrylic mix. It's not good. Throw them out. Um, if you want, use them for an art project on a demolished car or something like that. Or use it to paint on paper or something. Um, don't let kids use Palmer. Palmer, it's sticky, ooey, gooey crap Palmer's is ah. <laughs> you don't have to paint your car paint somebody else's car here's what you do take that Palmer's and if the person using the acrylic paint isn't getting the picture pour that Palmer's on their car it's not gonna hurt it it's gonna wash off find out what car they're driving you know put it on the back window or something nah don't do that don't follow my instructions that's bad Give it to your annoying next door neighbor <laughs> and their kids. Let them worry about it. Oh, just if it doesn't come from, put it to you this way. If it doesn't come from a reputable source, which I would not consider Walmart reputable, uh, don't use it. I mean, even at Halloween time, when you walk into Walmart in their section, Wolf Novelties, Wolf Face Art and Effects has their little smaller company, Wolf Novelties, a little subset, which puts out professional quality face paints with less pigment in them out to the mainstream market for Halloween. I try to get people to get that. You know what they do? They get the crap because it's got glitter in it. So um, maybe I got to call Shelly Fresco Farmer. Uh, April Powell or Kurt Drake and ask them, hey, for Halloween in those wolf novelties, put a little thing of glitter in there and I can guarantee it'll sell a lot better and we'll get rid of this uh, um, Chinese crap, you know, that keeps going into Walmart. So, uh, You don't even have to paint an arm to show how much uh, Palmer sucks. I mean, just let them sniff it. Stuff smells worse than glue. Um, ah. Anybody else want to call in? I'll answer right away. Just like I do with Tal. Be live on the air with me. Uh, so, let me see, what else could I go into, huh, um, you don't have any questions, uh, you want me to send you some strawberry Twizzlers instead? Since you don't have any questions. But you'll call anyways. Yay! Come on, Shelly. Call. Call me. Call the number on the screen. Talk to me live. <laughs> maybe. Call me maybe. Uh, let's not get into that. Uh, 
whole call me maybe thing. I saw one the other day that was just really bad. <laughs> uh. Hello, you're live on the air. Here's my number, so call me maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Stop it. <laughs> So you may not you may not have any questions, but do you have anything you want to talk about? Um, I haven't been able to get to the challenge, and I feel really really bad about that. But things have just been really so crazy. You got until Monday. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe I can work on it because I have three festivals this weekend, and right. I also have um, three different party events to do. There you go. We'll do it at one of the festivals if you have a little bit of time. I can always paint one of the artists. She's there you always, go. I painted her, the tiger. She's really excited about that. The painter is a skull. <laughs> yes. I don't know. She, she usually likes super people. Okay. okay. Yes. So that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. And the other thing is I would like to debate about the difference between cherry Twizzlers and strawberry Twizzlers. Because <laughs> even though cherry is the original flavor, I do think that the strawberry is better because it doesn't have that almost like a bite to it, that acidic bite kind of, that the cherry has. And I think the cherry has a little bit more of an acid taste. Oh, and also strawberry <laughs> Twizzlers smell a lot better. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm not going to argue that point, <laughs> um, but there is a question in the uh, chat, since you do do festivals and stuff, maybe you can answer this question too. Um, how do you handle your lines at festivals? Um, it depends. If I'm alone, I don't really have much choice. I usually let the adults handle it that are waiting with their kids because... When I'm alone, I won't have time to do it. And um, the parents are usually pretty good at policing the line so that their kid isn't cut in front of. Right. I always look at it like that. But how and, do you handle um, them? How do you handle them as far as um, wait time, uh, complainers in line? You know, the people that are getting upset. They're making smart ass remarks in the back. Um, uh, you know all this and that because I know how I do it and my way probably wouldn't work for others so I'm I want to know from a different person uh, how you would handle those type of lines the people that are getting frustrated that maybe is taking too long and this and that or what if it rains or you know being out in the hot sun and stuff well um I feel really bad if it's if it's like really hot like it's been so insane hot and if I'm painting faces and there's a kid, and he wants his face painted like a skull. And the parents are like, it's really hot. It's going to sweat off. I don't think it's... I go, you know, and it's probably not the best thing for me, but I try to talk the kid into getting something a little bit smaller, like maybe half a skull. And I make it sound so amazingly cool, even though it's not as much money. But that way the kid's happy and the parent's happy, and I still make a little bit more money. A little bit of money. Right. That's what I try to do. And then when it is raining, I tell the parents, you know, it's going to wash off. Right. <laughs> and they go, ah, that's fine. Uh, we'll run through the paint. Dryer. There are raindrops. And I go, well, okay. And I'll take their money, but I think it's stupid, but I'll do it anyway. I just told them to look at the ground yeah. for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if they're okay with it, you know, okay, fine. He, you want your face painted like that and it's torrential thunderstorming out? Sure. Sure. Okay. You've got an umbrella? Go for it. Let's do that for you. But when it comes to with people waiting in line, and it actually happened last year, um, there was another face painter at this, this art fair that I was at, and even though they were doing airbrush and they did have stencils, they didn't if they weren't as good right. as me, even though I just think I'm like a mediocre type painter, but they weren't as good as me. So my line was twice 
the length of hers. Right. And I was taking a long time, and there was this grandmother in line with these two kids, and she was for about half an hour, and she was only like three people away from getting done, and she was making me uncomfortable because I don't know what these people are thinking when they make these comments out loud that we can't hear them. Yeah, that's a big issue. And with that, yeah. you really don't want to... You want to stay as professional as possible. You want to have a smile on your face. Now, with my lines, people know that they're going to be waiting 10, 15, 20 minutes for a face. I do get those yeah. that complain in line. And I just, you know, if the kid makes a comment, I've been here for 15 minutes. I've been here for 40. I've been here for an hour. I'm like, well, I've been here since 9 o'clock in the morning. Would you like my job? And I'll say it with a smile, <laughs> joking about it, you know. And then he's like, no, I don't want to. And I go, okay, but, you know, there's only, like, two people ahead of you. Don't worry, you know, we'll get to you. I'll make sure that your face is painted. You try to assure them, but, you know, you're also, for me, I'm not worried about those people that complain. Most of the people that complain are only going to pay the $5 faces anyways. It's the people that have the patience and want to stand in my line and like they did on the 4th of July, which I thought was kind of funny, um, I'm set up right next to my old business partner because we both needed power. And, you know, I'm explaining to people, I said, well, you know, me and my old business partner, we are the highest prices. We have the same prices. Then there's cheaper ones around there. And the lady standing in between the two tents where my old business partner is at goes, but you're the best. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, that's a great compliment. Yeah. I laughed about it, and I was like, oh, geez, you know, this is going to cause drama somewhere. But, you know, people will stand in line. If they like your work, if they want your work, they'll stand there. If they don't, if they're impatient, they'll leave. There's nothing you can do about oh, yeah. the lines except have a smile on your face. That's it. Just smile if and somebody, politeness. Exactly. You have to smile. If somebody starts saying something about how it's taking so long, I look at them, I smile, and I go, and I actually tell them, I want to make sure that the person, that this child sitting in my chair is going to have the same quality of job that I did the very first person today. Oh, yeah. So if it takes me just as long, it takes me just as long. I'm not going to, I, and, I, and I smile. I go, I want to be able to say I did my best on this child. Every person that sits in my chair, I want to tell, I want to feel like I've done my best or I haven't done my job. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I kind of, I want to be like I am on Facebook, very honest, but I know I can't do that in public um, because through a computer, nobody can throw a fist at you, but you know, they yeah. can throw a fist at you in real life. Um, but I hate the people that come up and they're like, What's taking you so long? You know, I, I could have done that by now. I could have had that done, or I could do that. And I like, I'll literally take a paintbrush and I'll hand it to them. And I'll say, okay, you finish for me. They'll be like, no. I said, <laughs> well, you made that remark. If you think you can do it faster, if you think you could do it better, or if you think you could do what I do, here's a paintbrush. There's the paint. There's the water. Go to town. Have fun. You know, and I will literally step back. And most of the time, they'll kind of back off off of that. And it does seem kind of rude to do that. But sometimes people need to be put in their place. Uh, you don't oh, do yeah. it all the time. You only do it in certain situations. And most of the time, this is when I don't have a long line anyways. This is like several people. It's very sporadic. I have a lot of free time. you know. And then these people come up. And you know, they're just... I love grandmothers. <laughs> Oh, Some no, grandmothers are just I hilarious. Actually, the one lady I was talking about earlier with her grandkids, I actually told her, I go, you know, there's an airbrush painter down the aisle there and around the corner. Why don't you move to her? I don't think she has a line at all. Yeah. And I said it with a smile, and everyone clapped when she left because she was so, oh, oh, oh I'll do that with. Happy. Yeah, I'll do that with complainers all the time. I'll say, there's other face painters around here who are cheaper. You know, and mm -hmm. I, as they're walking off, I go, but you get what you pay for. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you just, 
that's why I don't have a problem with the complainers and lines. I things are just gonna happen. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. I've done paid events where people at the end asked for my business card and said they were gonna contact the Better Business Bureau on me for not painting their child's face at this event. I'm like, well, you know what? If you can get the city from tearing down my tent that they put up so I could do this, I'll finish it up. But, you know, you're hired. You can't do it all the time. I mean, where were you an hour ago? (laughs) Yeah. That's funny. Better business bureau. Yes, and that literally did happen in Gatlinburg, Tennessee at the Ribbon Wing Fest that they had going on. Um, I was hired by the city, and I set up, and they're arguing with me. In fact, one lady said, you tell that man he's a bad man for not painting your face. And I just wanted to tell the child, you tell her that your mom is a bad mom for teaching her children to be bad people. You know? Yeah. What kind of example are, are those parents setting? It's just horrible. Well, if you know the Gatlinburg area, it doesn't take much to get those kind of people there. Um <laughs> I was there. I was there. I went there um, in North Carolina. I worked a festival in my grandmother's hometown. And uh, on the way back, we stopped at Gatlinburg. We're out in North Carolina. Robbinsville. Okay. I was going to say, if it was Mint Hill Madness, that's a bad one. (laughs) (laughs) Stay away from Mint Hill Madness, which is just right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, no, it was... It's a free festival. My grandmother pays taxes. Graham County. I met Jim Tom, the moonshiner, and he sang for me. Raw whiskey, raw whiskey. It was great. Meet all kinds of people. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I like those festivals. I like the small ones. Uh, I like big ones, too, well, but only when they're not getting up in my face. Coming by and, you know, <laughs> related to half the town. I don't know. I'm talking to a relative or not. It's kind of awkward sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Any more questions that we have in the chat room? After four hours of painting, ten minutes. I'm not saying bad words. You, you... Spelled it correctly, but you added two little things to it. <laughs> the old meme. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not hiding any letters there. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, you're just gonna... Best way to deal with lines is just, you know, get a mirror, a razor blade. Oh, no, that's the wrong line. Um... <laughs> Just do what no, you normally do. do. You can only do what you can do. <laughs> yeah, just do what you can do. Don't try to appease everybody. Just be kind and nice to each customer as you get them. Don't worry about the time because if you're worrying about time, you're not worrying about yourself. And I have seen so many people get stressed out. Oh, I gotta just knock out as many faces as I can to make all my money. Well, you know, if you're knocking out faces and you're only charging, and I've seen these people charge like two and three dollars a face and stuff like that, and they're knocking them out and knocking them out and knocking them out, and they're doing these faces all day long, and I've got my prices at five, ten, and fifteen, and I walk away with three times more money than they made, and they were stressed out the whole time. There's a problem. Stop stressing and yourself the work out. Isn't as good. Right. I always do my best work that I can at any event that I do, whether hired or it's pay, you know, uh, paper face. Just do what you got to do. Um, don't worry about the customers too much. You're going to have happy customers. You're going to have mad customers. You're going to have the compulsively mad customers all the time. You know, the ones that are just going to complain no matter what it is, no matter how great it is. Um, just try to do it with a smile. Be as professional as possible and just do your job. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all. So, um, thank you for calling, Shelly. And, uh, oh, you're welcome. 
Oh, no problem. I'm going to uh, stop the recording. You can stay on the phone if you want and talk to me uh, after I stop the recording. Um, but I'm going to end it now. It's been an hour, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next Thursday at 8 o'clock. Same bad hey, time. how come it changed Wednesday to Thursday? You're going to you're gonna have to watch the recording to figure that out because I talked about it at the beginning of the show. Well, I was having technical difficulties. So was I. Now, the reason I changed, for anybody who just tuned in, and I guess I'll make this really brief before I cut it off. The reason I changed it from Wednesday to Thursday is I'm actually part of a group now that does meetings on Wednesdays. There's also uh, Faba TV that does some of theirs. Usually it's on the 15th of the month whenever they do a live show. But they don't do it on the weekends that much. It's usually a Monday, a Tuesday, or a Wednesday. So that's why um, I'm not having it during those times. Uh, they also have it at 8 o'clock. Uh, the reason I pushed it up to 8 o'clock is because there are a lot of people still at work during the time when my show comes on. So this gives them that little bit of time to get home, uh, get something to eat, turn on the computer, and they can watch me. Uh, still recording it. I'm still having the problem with the mobile devices and stuff. But hopefully on a different day that usually nothing's going on at 8 o'clock at night and you can watch it live and call in. And that's pretty much it. So, that that work for you? Yeah, I just, just you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to sign off. Um, if you missed anything, you can catch the recording on YouTube. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.